The year is 1950, the place, Canada. Wilbert B. Smith, senior radio engineer with the Canadian Government Department of Transport sent a memo to the controller of telecommunications. The memo stated that UFOs were real and that the USA was investigating them in secret. On November 21, 1950, Wilbert B. Smith, a senior radio engineer with the Canadian Government Department of Transport sent a memo to the controller of telecommunications. The memo recommended that a research project be set up to study the subject of UFOs. We believe that we are on the track of something which may well prove to be the introduction to a new technology, Smith wrote. The existence of a different technology is borne out by the investigations which are being carried on at the present time in relation to flying saucers. Smith went on to state that through discreet inquiries made at the Canadian Embassy in Washington he had learned from Dr. Albert Sarbauer that of the matter is the most highly classified subject in the United States government rating higher even than the H-bomb. B-flying saucers exist. See their modus operandi is unknown, but concentrated effort is being made by a small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush. D. The entire matter is considered by the United States authorities to be of tremendous significance. Here we have incontrovertible evidence for the high security classification attached to the subject. The reference to the small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush is equally significant. Since in 1947, following the retrieval of parts of a UFO near Roswell, New Mexico, a small, select group, codenamed Majestic 12, was established to inform the president about UFO developments, and it was headed by Dr. Bush. Project Magnet, 1950 to 1954. The Department of Transport was not slow in accepting Smith's recommendation, and on the 2nd of December 1950 Project Magnet was established by Commander C.P. Edwards, then Deputy Minister of Transport for Air Services. Smith was appointed engineer in charge, with another two engineers and two technicians working part-time. The Broadcast and Measurement Section of the Telecommunications Division was given a directive to carry out the project with whatever assistance could be obtained from sources such as the Defense Research Board and National Research Council. Dr. O. M. Soland, Chairman of the Defense Research Board, offered his full cooperation. The Canadian government has continually tried to play down the work of Wilbert Smith and Project Magnet. In 1964, for example, the Department of Transport informed an inquirer. We would reiterate that at no time has this department carried out research into the field of unidentified flying objects. As stated by Mr. Depew is Enhance Art on December 4, 1963, a small program of investigation in the field of G-magnetics was carried out by the telecommunications division of this department between 1950 and 1954. This minor investigation was for the purpose of studying magnetic phenomena, particularly those phenomena is ulting from unusual boundary conditions in the basic electromagnetic theory. This personal project was at no expense to the department, nor did it have any departmental sponsorship. That the government was lying has now been established with the release of official Project Magnet documents, obtained by Arthur Bray. One of these is the summary of sightings reported to and analyzed by Department of Transport during 1952, containing 25 UFO reports from which I would like to cite two sightings by qualified observers. The first took place at Halifax, Nova Scotia, on June 15 at 8.32 a.m. A meteorological assistant on reserve army maneuvers noticed what seemed to be a large silver disk in the sky southeast of Halifax. 
It moved southwest for about 30 seconds at an estimated altitude of 5,000 to 8,000 feet and then ascended vertically and in two to five seconds merged an to cumulus clouds at 11,000 to 12,000 feet. If the altitude estimates are correct, from the bearing and elevation data obtained from this observer, the diameter of the disk works out at about 100 feet. A large standard aircraft was in the sky at the time and the object seemed to move much more rapidly than the plane. The object's speed was estimated to be at least 800 miles per hour. The second sighting occurred at McDonald Airport, Manitoba, on the 27th of August 1952. A disc-shaped object with shadows on it as if it had an irregular surface was seen by two meteorological officers at 4.45 a.m. at McDonald Airport. The object made two turns about the field and when struck by the light from the rotating beacon made off toward the northeast and was out of sight within a second. There was no sound whatsoever. The object glinted like shiny aluminum when the beacon light struck it. In an interim report on Project Magnet dated the 25th of June 1952, Wilbert Smith stated, If, as appears evident, the flying saucers are emissaries from some other civilization and actually do operate on magnetic principles. We have before us the fact that we have missed something in magnetic theory but have a good indication of the direction in which to look for the missing quantities. It is therefore strongly recommended that the work of Project Magnet be continued and expanded to include experts in each of the various fields involved in these studies. On the 10th of August 1953, Smith filed another report on Project Magnet, which contained some astonishing conclusions. It appears then, that we are faced with a substantial probability of the real existence of extraterrestrial vehicles, regardless of whether they fit into our scheme of things. Such vehicles of necessity must use a technology considerably in advance of what we have. It is therefore submitted that the next step in this investigation should be a substantial effort toward the acquisition of as much as possible of this technology which would without doubt be of great value to us. The Canadian government has denied that Smith's conclusions are in any way representative of officialdom and Smith himself disclaimed official status for the report, emphasizing that it simply represented his own views and those of his small research group. It was neither endorsed nor rejected by the government, yet Smith's credentials and integrity are beyond dispute and for years afterward he continued to represent his department before the House of Commons Broadcasting Committee. In December 1953, Smith set up a UFO detecting station at Shirley's Bay, outside Ottawa, with registering devices including a gamma ray counter, a magnetometer, a radio receiver, and a recording gravimeter. But so intent were government scientists to avoid being associated with such a controversial project that even on the day the station went into operation, Dr. Solant was quoted as saying that reports of its establishment were completely untrue. In fact, the building housing the detecting equipment was loaned to Smith by the Defense Research Board, of which Dr. Solant was chairman. A definitely anomalous disturbance was recorded on the 8th of August 1954, but heavy fog prevented Smith and his associates from seeing anything in the sky. Perhaps coincidentally, the Department of Transport announced two days later that it was closing down the station, although the actual decision to do so had been made in June that year. Smith explained that the reason for discontinuing Project Magnet was that it had become an embarrassment to the government due to unwelcome publicity. But Smith himself was given the go-ahead to continue with the project on an unofficial basis in his own free time. As researcher Arthur Bray comments, 
A cover-up is indicated by the fact that the public was led to believe that the government was no longer interested in flying saucers. My take. This here, my friends, is the smoking gum. There is no two ways about it. This is either the proof that the government is investigating UFOs and lying about it to the public, or it is a put-up job to distract us from something else that the government is doing. What do you think? Resources. Above top secret, Timothy Good, 1988.